Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our uh, City of New Ulm Renew Oversight Committee meeting. Uh, appreciate all those that are in attendance. Um, the meeting minutes and agenda were sent out ahead of the meeting, so hopefully our committee members had a had a chance to uh, review the agenda and minutes. First item of business um, for this meeting will be to approve the meeting minutes uh, from our March 27th uh, session. So would look to the committee for any comments, questions, or recommend recommended changes on the uh, minutes from March 27th. I see no changes, so I'll offer, offer a motion to approve. Okay, thank you. We have a motion. Second. And we have a second. Any more discussion on the March 27th meeting minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the bulk of the agenda um, for this afternoon's meeting would be uh, for project updates and mainly around Johnson Park. So uh, it looks like there was an update uh, from a bid opening uh, uh, yesterday uh, here at City Hall. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Director Schmitz to kind of provide an overview of the documents that were handed out and kind of next steps for this afternoon. Thank you very much, Chair Fire and members. Um, I, let me go ahead and point out some of the documents that were handed out. First of all, I'll begin by stating the authorized bid opening took place yesterday at uh, 2 p.m. here in the council chambers um, after a uh, you know full distribution of the bid package to a number of different um, organizations and, and general contractors throughout the area uh, with our consultants ISG. And we had two um, bids that came in yesterday, two competitive bids. So we'll be discussing that. Um, and so what you have here in handouts, uh, you have ISG's bid tabulation. Uh, that's this horizontal sheet with uh, the two quotes from R.W. Karlstrom and Web Construction, along with the various uh, alternates. So that's the bid tabulation document. Uh, you also have a letter from ISG, a uh, two-sided letter with um, the results of the, um, you know, a bid opening and uh, their qualifying web construction, the low, the low bid, the low quota, and some, uh, some other additional information from ISG. And then you also have a staff-prepared financial report a uh, single page uh, with kind of the uh, the overall financial picture that we see it to date um, for the Johnson Park Renew project. So those are the documents. I see there's a few other documents here that may be at uh, the table. Uh, those may have been uh, prepared and uh, uh, presented by uh, the New Orleans Baseball Association. So any question on those documents? Uh, the large 11 by 17 is just one page of many in the uh, the final drawing, uh, the bid set, the plan set. Okay, we also have the entire up on the screen, um, the uh, the entire plan set available electronically. So with that, um, I think what I'd like to do is is call Justin Steffel up to the podium, please, and uh, go ahead and tell us. Um, you know, some of you want to walk through your, your letter, Justin, and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your thoughts from yesterday's bid opening, please. Absolutely. Um, I can do that. Um, as Tom said yesterday, well, first off, I'm Justin Steffel with ISG. You guys hired ISG to provide the design services for the project and the bidding. So we're to that phase. Yesterday we opened bids um, after about a month-long advertisement process. Um, we did advertise. Um, across uh, building exchanges, um, our internal advertisement website, and then locally in the paper uh, in New Ulm and in Mankato. And we also contacted about 37 building exchanges. So we felt like we had a good um, reach when we went out for this advertisement to make sure we, we did that properly. Um, we did receive two bids, one from Web Construction and one from RW Carlstrom Construction, both contractors in Mankato. Um, they're both contractors that we've worked with on numerous projects and have had good luck with um, both of them. Um, the low bidder, when you look at the base bid, bid tabulation sheet is web construction at about 996, 775. Um, I did contact um, web uh, earlier today and kind of talked through their bid with them. 
and pre-qualified the bid and they were very confident um, that their bid included the project scope and project specs um, and <clears throat> to add to that we did work with web construction on a renovation in Franklin Rogers in Mankato um, which wrapped up in 2018 and we had a very 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 successful project there so we um, we feel that web is qualified for the job and would recommend if we award today that uh, web construction would be the low responsible bid to be awarded to um, when we put together the bid specs we broke the project out a little bit to give you guys some um, understanding of what we're spending money on and, and kind of where we're going with the project we did a base bid and then we did six alternates um, and I'll kind of walk you through that so if you want to um, the sheet Tom handed out the bid tab sheet would probably be the best sheet to take a look at um, so you can see the base bids on the left uh, web at 996 775 um, you can certainly award um, base bid only um, and then look at other options along the way to award as well. So alternate A1 is an add to the project for concrete rehabilitation. Um, we've been kind of looking at all the concrete in the grandstands, um, improving that and tying everything together. Um, the fact is, you know, we're going to come in and do some new work and the new work, you know, you, you want to, to tie in and look the same as the old work. So we um, we got a price on what it would cost to dress up that existing concrete that remains. Um, we thought that seventeen or sixteen thousand nine hundred dollar number was very reasonable. I think we had estimated about twenty five grand for that, so I think that's a good number. Um, if budget allows, we would definitely recommend approval of alternate A one. Excuse me, Justin. Can yes. I ask you what, what do you mean by dress up the concrete? What exactly so the the mean? process would be to um, power wash and. Um, shot blast or grind the existing concrete and then we would add another product over top um, it's a sacrete product that gets troweled on and then it looks like new newer concrete that'll hold yes it'll hold yeah. it's additionally some uh, various um, repairs of the old concrete area there's there's portions of the um, concrete grandstand that needs some minor repairs here and there a, a dent here a missing little piece there on a step so it's some uh, repairs um, modest repairs and then resurfacing mm -hmm. so when you walk into the new or the renovated facility you know all that concrete is going to look restored refreshed and new uh, as opposed to uh, aged correct so that that's alternate a1 alternate a2 would be the option to paint the structural steel in the grandstand so everything really from ground up all the columns um, the beams the purlins you see under the roof deck um, all of that stuff would get a fresh coat of paint currently that is a, a lead based paint system um, so the process that we have specified complies with MPCA regulations they come in and they do a light what they call a light hand scrape in lieu of coming in and doing a um, large sanding or sandblasting which you cannot do with a lead based paint they come in and do a light hand scrape and then um, we have some special paint products that would encompass that lead kind of bury that lead underneath and um, take care of that so that's that's what alternate A2 is um, A3 alternate is an observation deck so this would be a proposed deck um, past first base in the right field foul area it's kind of a two-tiered deck and it has about a 40 linear f feet of uh, bar stool seating and then in front of the bar stool seating it has areas for um, tables and chairs um, and seating um, so that came in at about 147 300 that includes the decking uh, we specified a maintenance free decking system it has wood joist structure underneath that sit on steel beam um, columns and beams a4 is the third base patio um, which would be directly behind the third base dugout if you guys remember from the original design we had a kind of a recessed plaza or patio one behind first base dugout one behind third um, this one we simply broke out to get the cost on this would be behind third base um, it it uh, certainly we would recommend moving ahead with it if budget allows it it seemed very much an integral part of the project um, and part of the original project scope um, alternate a5 we were looking for some potential d decks 
um, web construction actually provided an ad of four thousand dollars to change from thin brick on the concession building to metal wall panel um, so the original wish or scope was to have it be thin brick so we would suggest that you reject alternate a5 and just stay with the base bid stay with the thin brick is that economically made more sense and we get the product we want um, alternate a6 was the metal mesh which is this feature up here so we we had them provide an optional deduct to remove that from the project um, um, again if budget allows I think that is a very important piece to the project um, it's kind of going to be the new identifying factor for the project so um, if budget allows we would recommend that that alternate be rejected and we maintain um, the structure here I believe the, the figure was pulled out of the project scope and we're going to take care of, of that maybe in a separate budget right. if, if that goes ahead um, so that that is a quick summary of the bids and the alternates is there any questions on any of the alternates or what they contain and how they work? I can certainly answer those. Just one question, or maybe a couple questions, but the uh, first one would be, are you surprised that uh, there were only two contractors that bid on the project? I'm not real surprised given the time of year um, and just what we've been seeing in southern Minnesota with what's going on with construction work right now. It's super busy um, ever since February things have really taken off we had some real good bids come in on some school projects um, back in February and then there was some projects bid out in um, March early April that we saw budgets start to go like that so I think I think people are really busy right now and that's why we saw two bids and then I also think it's a very um, specific scope of work it's not a you know it's not a standard 30 by 40 building and you're throwing up wood studs or roof trusses it's very specific scope of work and probably only aligns to a select few contractors that want to get involved in something like that so I am not overly surprised we had hoped for three four bids but I think that's what we ended up with I'm uh, just looking at the original RFP on the project and um, as I read this it's not maybe as clear as it could be um, it talked about um, reconditioning the framework which I assume might be the painting um, as part of the project and the estimated total project budget including design was a million dollars and now we're up to a million five thirty seven I guess I just my initial reaction I think this is substantially more than what we had anticipated for the budget and I think our job this afternoon would be to make a recommendation to the council regarding the bid and the alternates mm -hmm. do you agree with that yeah. okay. well then I will say you know when you look at this project you know back in 2016 when a million dollars was kind of that set budget it's kind of in line with the price of inflation. We went from a million to 1.3, um, you know, that's about 10% a year. Um, you yeah, know, and that's, you know, kind of where we're gonna see a lot of these projects kind of fall into place. You know, we're gonna try and get it as close as we can to a million dollars, but, you know, this is when we, you know, when we didn't move forward, probably when these projects should have moved forward, um, you know, this is, this is what we're gonna see. Um, I think the, the RFP would have gone out late last summer. Yeah. That wasn't the RFP didn't go out in 2016. Yeah. That was 2018, and maybe the number wasn't adjusted over those two years. But, you know, that's that's what we're you know that's what we're here today to look at these alternates and see if we want those. Um, and really, it's kind of comes down to almost two options to build what was envisioned when we looked at the project or come come back with a watered down version of that and not get really what we envisioned when we we started these projects um, you know there are a couple options here that I feel we can we can live without but you know as a committee we need to decide uh, what we want to bring forward to council 
for them to make the ultimate decision. <clears throat> yes, for me, it, <clears throat> it's going to be probably important for the committee even beyond this project to kind of look at the next 12 months and factor this discussion today into the next two to three to four discussions we're going to have on other renew projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's hard kind of in isolation to say, well, let's do this. Every decision today will have some effect on the, the rest of the decisions for renew in the, the city of of New Ulm. So I think that's the, the work is the recommendation today has to, at least in my mind, include um, how this project gets prioritized alongside other projects. So if it's, you know, each of them is, is um, equally important or prioritized, then we, we know we took the dome project off the list that the, the excess funding would be distributed in that way? Or is it, well, no, that we would re-rank and how does that, that funding get distributed back to the original budgets? Um, so I, I feel like it needs to be a discussion beyond Johnson Park today. Director Schmitz. Uh, Chair Fryer and members, I agree with that. Chair Fryer, thank you. Um, I would like to next go over um, the staff financial snapshot that we provided, the single piece of paper here entitled Renew Johnson Park Financial Report. Um, so what we have towards the top of that page is what, uh, what Justin Steffel has gone through with us and what the bid opening showed us. Um, and that was the basically 1.3 million. Uh, underneath that is the contingency. We have not, you know, we didn't bid out a contingency, um, but the recommended conting contingency for a project of this size and scope um, and age would be 10%. So that's $130,000. Uh, below that, you have previously authorized city council um, expenditures of the design. You know, the design. Um, um, of $85,000, and that's um, already committed and approved. Uh, below that, you have material testing, where we'll be doing uh, concrete testing and other testing throughout the project. Um, that'll be a cost for the city, uh, the public address system uh, replacement, and then um, the design of the graphic, you know, kind of the signature graphic on the German Street facade entrance of the uh, facility. So I just wanted to review that and point that all out. That's where um, Attorney Hippert got the $1.537 million figure that we have on our staff report. So that kind of explains the documents and the bid opening. And um, now it's the committee's uh, discussion time and decision or recommend, recommended decision, uh, hopefully that we can come up with a recommendation today uh, mm -hmm. to have staff uh, right up tomorrow. So it goes into the city council packet for this coming Tuesday's meeting for council action um, upon our recommendation. And the, um, you know, recommend, recommendation to be on, on our timeline would be to award the project, um, hopefully at this next city council meeting for construction to begin right after the high school baseball season, which would be the section tournament that we're hosting um, for the entire section um, down at the park. Probably one more question for, I don't know, Director Schmitz or um, <coughs> Justin. From, if we, if we go back um, to the original planning phase for the project when we were gathering stakeholders and a little bit of the, um, and, and that probably happened even way back during renew, if we if we look at the the budget that or the bids that came in, um, how much do you, we allocate or attribute to potential scope creep, which happens in every project? Let's be honest. Um, versus truly underestimating or not fully kind of being aware of the inflationary and uh, low supply of contractors we have at the moment competitively bidding on project. Uh, Chair Fryer and members, uh, what I would say there is that um, two things other than the inflation that we talked about. Um, the other is the scope change of the deck, uh, the right field observation <coughs> deck. I know the City Council and, and other organizations, including ours here, have discussed the uh, you know observation decks at both Miller Park and Johnson Park. I know we're not talking about Miller now. 
that's not on the table, but the uh, the Johnson Park observation right field deck was certainly an optional uh, additional alternative to the original scope, and that's one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars plus design would be you know another six grand of of designing that. So um, that's certainly a chunk of change that has um, affected um, the total price and financial picture of the project. I guess my concern is, I think, what Toby pointed out, which is that we have a limited overall budget with Renew. And every dollar, if we're going to be doing this project first, which we need to just because of the timing, every dollar that goes into this is going to be one less dollar for something else. And although by eliminating the dome, it did free up some money, um, you know, we're still at the very preliminary stages of the rec center. And <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if that's going to need every penny we can come up with to get anything meaningful out of that. And uh, you know, I understand that if things are cut on this, it's not going to be quite what everyone wanted, but I think there's going to be a lot of angst if we end up making some big cuts on the rec center. It might affect a lot more people. Um, so I think we have to be very cautious as far as what we suggest be included. Thank you. Other questions, comments? I guess on the uh, detailed mesh, I don't really quite understand what we're talking about removing that 16-8. Is that just going to sit empty or how is that going to, the uh, concept for that design? Uh, thank you, Councillor Mack. I would defer to uh, Justin Steffel and Ryan Wire on that. Sure, sure. I'll I'll answer that. Um, you'd be essentially taking this shape out. Okay. Um, there's a metal mesh, and then there's also substructure behind it. We had to attach to the existing columns to support the wind load. So it'd be everything down below would stay, but it'd be this this piece. So what would be there then? Just a really just open like it is. Just an open like spot it is today. Yeah. I I think if I remember back to some of our meetings, you know, the vision was to be able to. That was kind of be iconic from the street from Fifth North mm -hmm. as you head down. You know, that would be the, the end of the <coughs> stadium. Is that purely aesthetic, or does it have any functional purpose? It's, Wind it's, protection. It's or? aesthetic. Um, you you might get a little bit of. Sun shading mm -hmm. and, and a little bit of wind resistance. But Otherwise, basically, we'd just be looking at the open pillars and the roof without that. Mm -hmm. I, I, we, we feel, you know, selfishly from a design standpoint that it's very important to have. Good, it's, yeah. It is. So, another question for me then, uh, or from me, would be is there anything? incorporated in the project that could be left as an alternate and revisited in time to not take away from the function um, until we could get through a similar process for other renew projects chair fryer and members uh, my answer to that question would be alternate a3 the observation deck um, the concrete rehabilitation, I think, is critical and key at this stage in, in this, for this project. Um, and, um, you know, refinishing the superstructure, refinishing the steel, I feel, I, I feel is definitely a critical. So that A1, A2 are critical. Um, you know, some may, well, in the third base patio, A4, might be difficult to do down the road or more difficult to do down the road than A3, the observation deck. Those, those are my thoughts. I don't know if Justin Well, I would just Diana. kind of reverberate that, you know, A1, A2, A4, if you choose to not do them today and do them down the road, I think they're going to, the prices are going to go up quite a bit. I mean, you know, as far as painting the structure, that's the right time to do it. Um, the roof's going to come off. You know, all the electrical's going to be down. The benches are coming out. So I think um, just naturally by having a prime bidder, prime contractor at the job site, you know, he's going to have a lift there, and the lift is available to the painter and some of the other subs. So, so I think um, those three items are 
good to do uh, now. Um, I did have some preliminary talks with the contractor on alternate A3, um, and he said he was more than willing to work with us on that alternate later, later if we wanted to table it for now and work on it later if we wanted to try to reduce the size of it a little bit, whatever. Um, he said he would be willing to work with us on that. Um, we also had some bid scope clarification to work out with him on some metal wall panels. Uh, we have some metal wall panels that are specified around the patios on the inside. Um, we had a heavy gauge metal wall panel specified, which I don't really think we need. I think we can save some money there, so we can work with them later on that if we so, so choose to do so. Other questions? We have a guest coming up behind you there, Justin. Uh, somebody else would like to have the microphone. Excuse me. Introduce you. yourself, as you know, Bob. Bob Skillings, uh, New Ulm, president of New Ulm Baseball Association. I just want to point out, you know, I handed this out to everyone, that originally when we looked at Johnson Park, the estimates without the observation deck were 1.2 million, and that's in this article. And so if you'd add the 150 to the 1.2 originally, you know, we're at what, 1.35. Um, and that's not not including the you know um, the ten percent and that kind of thing. So so really from the beginning we were right on as far as what this would what this would cost. But as part of the renew committee, we tried to you know get more projects in, and so we we said well let's let's take a couple hundred thousand from Johnson Park um, and and lower that to a million. So now that we have a project that probably won't happen, it would be nice to see that 200,000 restored. And then uh, as far as the observation deck, New Orleans Baseball Association will do everything we can in our power to help get that done. But I think that working with the contractor, you know, we might be able to get it done at a lesser cost and, and be able to help as well with that. So take that into consideration please thank you okay yes. um, my thoughts are is I, I wouldn't want to compromise on the concrete rehab or the painting of the the grandstand um, I can't remember it was the third base patio was that that was in the original Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, it yeah. was. We just decided to get okay. a separate cost for that. Okay. As in, in to do so, we yeah. turned it into an alternate. And I don't want to compromise on the mesh. I think that that just is going to add so much to the look of the, the facade and stuff. So um, I don't know. I think our recommendation should be to the council to put the observation deck A3 on hold and continue to look at that as we sort through some of the other projects but i think everything else is needed to complete the project councillor fisher that's exactly what i was i was going to move that that we uh, suggest that the council adopt this but delete a3 but bring back in the metal mesh so it'll look like that and mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. wide open yeah. so that i'll put a motion out there for the committee to consider and I'll second that. Okay, we have a, make sure I am able to uh, restate this. We have a motion and second to uh, recommend to the council what's been presented uh, with uh, the exception of A3 and A6. Is that correct? Now, A6 would come back in. Come back in. Yeah. Right. Can I just, something? I, would, I would suggest rejecting A5. Oh, yes, in that, rejecting yeah. A5. Right. Reject yeah. a for, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah, are oh, because the one actually was a extra cost. Yeah. Okay, you're you're, you're looking off what the bidders got, panels. which is what we should be looking yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 The right. middle okay. panels. Yep. We want the, the Okay, so we were gonna maybe be adjusting a motion, is that correct? I would said? amend it to reflect the, the comments from our designer. Okay, so we would be rejecting A five. A five. And A6. A6 and A3. 
Okay, we have a motion and second. Any more discussion on uh, either the bids or the project? I guess I'd like to still consider the, the deck yet. Um, you know, if we could work with the New Orleans Baseball Association and, and capacities, if they want to come up with how they want to help fund it and uh, bring it back possibly uh, with more discussion, but so we can move forward here for the project tonight and bring it to council. Uh, you know, I'm in agreements with everything as stated, sure, but if, uh, I mean, yeah, I would I like would to have no objection to that. Um, and I don't know exactly if the council were to approve this at its next meeting, um, you would want to get the contract signed and they're going to need to know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that would give the association enough time or what the contractor would do if they're looking at the possibility of the association covering that cost. Um, I don't know, Bob, if that's anything it's even possible, how you know, quickly you would know if that's anything that's feasible or not. Oh. No, wait. I think the question, uh, Mr. Skillings, was whether the association has $150,000 to <laughs> put towards the, the oh, if they If they can get it by the time they would need to. Possibly. Yeah. The, uh, another thought about that deck, though, is, is to re-examine um, the engineering and and the design right now and see if there's an, uh, some compromise to bring that cost down some and um, I and and I don't know um, but in talking with contractors that have some experience with that project they thought that you know right now it's it's designed to the hilt and we might not need it designed to the hilt. And, and we have time, uh, I think, to maybe have that observation deck be added in time for the tournament. Maybe it doesn't happen at the same time as, as Johnson Park being renewed right now, but, but there would be, really that observation deck is, is for the 2020 state tournament. And, and it'll be a nice to have going forward for other tournaments, that kind of thing. It'll be a very good feature. If you go to a lot of the amateur parks uh, that host tournaments, they have those observation decks and they're great. And so um, there, I think that there's um, alternatives that will work hard to, to come up with uh, to get that done. Um, and, and hopefully Nuba can you know, pay for most of that. Thank you. <coughs> One more comment. One more comment. So I think <coughs> there might be another option to on that deck as well. I certainly could ask the contractor if he would hold that alternate for an extended mm -hmm. period of time, if that helped. I think by virtue of how the bid specs are set up, he should hold that for 30 days anyways. But I could see if he'd be willing to hold that for... A longer period of time it would give us some time to maybe value engineer it and see where it comes okay sure. thank you another Anderson. option yeah. okay we have uh one more, speaker. Oh, one more may I? you may uh just to reiterate what you Bob can just uh, said. introduce yourself my name is denny Schomer, and i wanted to reiterate what bob said if you know baseball and if you go around the state it's not just a fad to have the the um, the deck it's functional it, and it's really an attraction and it draws people there and it keeps them there they like to be able to move they like to be able to get up and walk around and not just be locked into a, a, a seat so to speak I do understand there is a cost that is associated with everything but our current structure has been there for 80 years roughly I don't think I don't think there's been a lot of renovation or overhaul to it so that's a pretty good longevity and so if we get another 80 years out of what we're putting in or even 40 because it's some of it's the original structure then it's money well spent uh, I would also say that everybody's good intentions about adding something later down the line 
probably doesn't happen. It, money gets put elsewhere. There's um, inflation that, that crops up. Uh, if, if you can do it, do it right. Do it now. And it'll be there for the long haul. Thank you, Danny. Okay, we had uh, a motion and a second to award uh, the project to Web Construction, and uh, with um, all of the alternates, with the exception of three, five, and six. Um, it says in the amount here, but uh, are you adding that? Yes, up? I am, okay. sure. I don't know if we need that, but. Um, if we could recommend that to the city council and they use their calculator, then you guys can. <laughs> Do you need that? I think that's that's the number. I Did you add back in the mesh? Did you add that back in? No. No, because that was part of the motion was to add back in the uh, metal mesh. Do you have that number for us, uh, Mr. Stuffel? Sixteen thousand eight hundred. Sixteen thousand eight hundred. Yeah. yeah, I mean. So we have to. Add so, that Chair down. Fire, if I can interject yeah, here, um, one million one fifty seven seven five okay. would be the accurate number. Yeah. Okay, with so a three reduced. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Leanna Flea from the Baseball Board. I've been on there for secretary for twenty years. I just have a few comments. I was wondering, you're talking about the painting and all that stuff, why that would be included in this one. To me, that should have been city maintenance done years ago. And a comment about the decking, too. You go to Arlington, you go to Green Isle, you go to Little Bird Island, Montevideo, and they all have little decks, too. It just adds so much to the park, and it just looks really nice, plus it's very functional. So I'm hoping you can add that back in if you would, since you aren't going to be doing the bubble, can't that money be distributed kind of evenly over the other projects <coughs> and uh, that's just I'm just thank wondering you. thank you thank you okay so we had the motion in second um, I won't restate that one more time look for uh, a vote here all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries thank you um, we had a few other agenda items, so it's exciting. Uh, uh, Chair Fire, I just have a quick question for the committee. Um, given the construction contingency recommendation, do you want to allocate that as well as a as a? Do you want to allocate those types of funds at this point to the project? So it's a good. Thank you, Ryan. Um, so what we to get uh, a more accurate. I guess picture of what it's going to take at this point. Um, point three. So, okay, we did not address the contingency. So we've already approved, obviously, the ISG mm -hmm. contract. But mm -hmm. uh, what are the feelings of the committee for the contingency? Mm -hmm. I, I make a motion uh, to approve adding a ten percent contingent contingency to the project. I'll second that. I guess um, so. We're going to have some discussion to keep moving. I don't know about the other costs here. We've already got some that are pre-approved, and then you've got the three additional services. I mean, are we, should we be recommending all of these to the council? I mean, I'm not sure when we talk about the, you know, the design allowance, does that also include the sign, or is that just the design? That's the sign itself. Okay. That's not any. So, I mean, I thought this would all be part of you know, the project. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to call a special meeting because we're hang holding no, up things. So no, I mean, so, I mean, if if the ISG contract has already been awarded, I mean, that's a done deal. Um, we've just got a motion pending for the contingency, but um, if the council is going to have to consider, Tom, would you be asking the council to consider the last three items as well at the next meeting? Yes, my understanding is we, uh, we 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 probably should include that. So I might recommend that um, we modify the motion to include the 10% contingency and the testing costs, the PA system, and the graphic design costs. Do you consider that a friendly amendment, Chris? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that I too. I would second it on that basis. So just so we. Can Get the to amend so my motion and second. Yes. Any more discussion on the uh, contingency and uh, 
three additional services as have, has been outlined on the. So we're now we're adding we're adding the last three. The last three as well. To yes, not to the web contract, not to the web construction but contract. But approval. But approval for. But recommending the council authorize those expenses for the project. For Johnson. Okay. I thought that there was going to be other funding for like the, the PA system and, and some of that other. Why wasn't the mesh, or why wasn't the mesh um, graphic included in the, in the project? Why yeah, that so out? yeah, committee members um, in discussions with ISG, the details were difficult to map out into a spec and there were some other um, local ideas. Um, one, for instance, there's a laser cutting company in town that can probably cut something pretty cool out there. Um, we decided we still wouldn't, we wouldn't include that in the general contracting due to the high bid nature of that type of item. Um, without a bunch of details and direct, uh, direct details to that contractor, we felt that we were gonna get a pretty inflated price and we had some direct ideas and local suppliers that I think we could save. And that, that goes for the same with the public address um, system. We felt uh, having a general contractor go out for bid when we had a local contractor that we felt very comfortable in saving significant amount of money. Um, I think ISG had something like 20,000 figured for the PA system and um, and I we felt staff we could get that done internally still using renew funds but pull it out of the general contractors um, contract itself so that was a both of those are basically a money saving um, angle I guess what I would like to see is a final number then of everything included because you know we were trying to hit that 1.2 and now we've kind of authorized more and now we're going to add another you know, 30,000 25,000 1.392665 1.39 26650 I think if my math is correct. Okay, so we're, we're we are now at 1.39 without the observation deck already. Tom, can you verify that real quick? Uh, I'm coming up with 1.305 What does that consist of? Um, that is, you know, the base bid, alternate A1, A2, A4, um, the 10% con contingency of uh, basically 130, um, also includes the testing, 13,700, the PA system of 5,800, and the uh, graphic. Of facade graphic of 5,000. I think the difference between what Chris is working on, am I right, and you were working on over here is also the ISG contracts. Which is already, yeah. Uh, I know it's already approved, but in terms but of the what's the project value yeah, of Johnson yeah, Park, yeah, that's we're true. pushing $1.4 million. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, if you take the $1 million Thirty-seven, and you subtract the one forty-seven, you'd have a million three nine, right? And then if we add the sixteen eight back in, yeah, one three oh five, yeah, you're going to be around a million four. Yeah, yep. yeah I've got one point three nine oh two six six fifty. Cool. I would. Uh, I have the amended number at. Um, so if I go down the line, I have one one million one five zero seven seven five, which is the adjusted base bid. The ten, the adjusted ten percent contingency based on that construction contract is one one five zero seven seven fifty, and then the two ISG contracts, the material testing, the PA system, and the front elevation graphic puts us at one point three seven five five three six fifty. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think we had a motion and a second. If I remember correctly, 
to at least uh, recommend to the council they add the contingency and add the three additional services as we have uh, reviewed. Um, we already approved the uh, contract for web or at least recommended approval for web and then ISG has already been approved. So, um, but for everyone to understand where we at with a project budget or restated uh, with these approvals, we would be at 1.375 million. Bring clarity to it. Yeah. Okay. If there's still support to uh, recommend approval of the contingency and those three additional services, uh, if no other discussion would uh, look for uh, approval, and um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Any other updates or questions on Johnson? All right. We'll go to Herman Heights Park. Director Schmitz. Thank you, Chair Fryer and members. Just a quick update on Herman is that we're uh, in the process of uh, finalizing the conceptual plan, which will then be brought to the Oversight Committee uh, before construction documents are uh, authorized. Uh, so that, that should be coming in the next month or two. We know it needs to dovetail with the retaining wall slope stabilization project, and that wouldn't be constructed until next year at the earliest. So, um, you know, we're, I would say, on schedule for construction up at Herman of those two projects in 2020 or later. Uh, Recreation Center update is simply that we're having our first big meeting with the construction manager and the architectural firm on May 9th, a week from Thursday. So uh, full speed ahead there. I think it'll be a busy summer with design at the Recreation Center and uh, possibly getting some footings in the ground uh, before winter, um, but otherwise full speed construction at the Recreation Center camps, campus in 2020. Uh, that's it for those <coughs> updates. And um, the next item of finance and bonding, I don't know if uh, Beth Kral has anything. I know there's no change, there's no update from the finance department for agenda item number three would have uh, maybe it's something to uh, have some discussions with our architect or construction manager or if Justin's willing to weigh in uh, I've just given what we faced here with Johnson and construction inflation mm -hmm. and the seasonal bidding of if you were out in February could have been more favorable than going out on April 30th I'd be interested with the rec center given the size of that budget what would what, how will timing influence some of the, the um, predictability around bidding interest um, from the number of contractors as well as if we miss one season and postpone it by six to nine months, what is going to happen to the $10 million budget? It, it, at least if we knew during the design phase, mm -hmm. if we had to schedule extra meetings, get people kind of on board to move quicker, that it was three hundred fifty or four hundred thousand dollars worth of project costs, I would want to know that at the start of it, rather than get to the end and say, well, geez, we were eight, you know, um, a month and a half behind, and now it's another five hundred thousand or whatever the big number is. And C could I ask it, Tom or Chris? If the meeting is coming up with the architect and the construction manager, does this committee play any future role in any of that, whether it's the meeting or getting a report on how the meeting went? I mean, is that going to go straight to the council? We're what's the I mean, I, it'll be pretty much the same process that Johnson Park went through where we have the subcommittee meet, we bring it to the full committee to... Um, approve and recommend to the City Council. Um, a lot of the um, issues that, that Toby had brought up um, will be addressed in some form at, at the meeting. They're going to put together, um, have a, a tentative timeline for design and construction um, and how they can see to save costs by maybe pre-bidding some of the footings and stuff. Um, so that's all going to be in that, that first initial meeting um, that we have. Um, you know, and we can always schedule um, uh, a full committee Do meeting you know, to how, give those updates. How long of a meeting have you got planned with them? Probably about an hour. 
Um, you know, it could be a little bit longer, but you know, I about mean, an I, hour. Do, have we gotten the contract yet from the construction manager? No, they they are currently working on that, and we'll get that to me. Um, I think they're going to bring it to the meeting on the ninth, but they may get a little bit sooner than that. Because um, right, if the guy's going to talk to us without a contract, I guess that's that's fine. But I'm just thinking. I mean, initially looking at the architects, they're going to be doing their schematics, and I mean, so much of this. I think, and we're all doing a dance here, it's they're estimating what the budget is, but especially when you're looking at the aquatics part of this thing, I mean, there's going to have to be some decisions made about mm -hmm. what are we getting yeah. and what are we not getting, how much well, are we spending. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's even going to really be coming up at the meeting on the 9th or if that's down the road. That will more than likely be down the road because a lot of the numbers that we have currently are on, you know, based on napkin drawings. You know, nothing's been etched in right, stone. Right. Um, and so when they come up, you know, come forward with different design concepts that they actually physically have sat down and designed, they're actually going to start knowing what those costs, a closer estimate to what those costs are going to be. And as they move closer to a final design, we're going to get kind of that guaranteed maximum price at the 95% completion um, uh, completion. So we'll pretty much know what's out there. Um, you know, there won't be too many surprises, you know, at that point because we'll be close to the final design. But, you know, I, I see just like Johnson Park, we're going to bring them back to the committee and bring those um, recommendations to the council. Is this committee going to receive a report uh, from our uh, retaining wall group that's uh, out there picking out designs and things of that nature? I think, you know, earlier this year, you know, mm -hmm. year we discussed as a council about allocating some dollars possibly from the renew towards that hillside, and we have a pretty big liability there. I feel that we're responsible there for to mow and to maintain and everything. And if we get continued washouts, you know, whether we could start possibly part of that project this year, you know, is I think how I'm leading. We've got another meeting scheduled. Yes, I mean, uh, I, I think if. If there's a, a concept or a potential recommendation of renew funding going for the slope stabilization project, I would expect that to come to this committee prior to actually going to the council. And I think we're at a point, um, we've got at least one other source that they wanted to talk to and give an opportunity to make a presentation mm -hmm. um, before the committee would be ready to recommend anything yeah. to this committee or to the council. Mm -hmm. so. okay. All right, is there any other business for today? I just have one question. <clears throat> As we go through the park and re or the recreation project, will we be presented like the designs, kind of like we were for the baseball park, that the committee will get together and the options will be presented to us and some of those decisions we'll be making? Yes. Because right. oh. yep. I know it's, it's expensive to bring these people down here, but and I know you don't want to have 15 people mm -hmm because everyone's going to have their own idea at some point you just got to make some decisions but I think that's going to be a lot more complicated than Johnson Park yeah. you know because there's so many facets to yeah. it and well, there'll be a couple yeah. options and we'll be able to decide you know hey let's pursue option one or option two then let you know the professionals do their work start coming up with stuff and like okay now we're you know down to option two here's an estimate with you know 9,000 square feet of a swimming pool area like no we don't need that much let's pare it down to get those costs to where we need them to get and those are the decisions you know that'll be brought here so we can um, you know let the architect and the construction manager just do their work and then come back with you know their recommendations um, so we can get mm -hmm. the project done you know in, in a timely manner to help you know save the costs and not incur any extra um, fees and stuff but Okay, thank you. Any other business for today? Hearing none, meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.